Uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Mark Smith, president of Dick Smith Ford, and I, it is my honor to serve as the chairman of the board for the Raytown Area Chamber of Commerce, which has been serving the Raytown community since 1929. On behalf of the chamber board, the members of our Chamber of Commerce, and our president, Vicki Turnbow, and Vicki standing back there, say hello, Vicki. I'd like to welcome you to tonight's mayoral candidate forum and alderman meet and greet. Uh, we're proud again to partner with the League of Women Voters, and that's a community organization that since 1920 has worked to increase engagement in the political process and make democracy work for all citizens. And we have quite a few uh, League of Women Voter folks here tonight. I'd like you all to raise your hand, wave, thank everybody that's thanked the League of Women Voters for putting this on. So with that said, I will defer to Carolyn Weeks with the League, who will discuss tonight's ground rules and start the forum. Thanks for coming, and I hope you enjoyed tonight's discourse. Thank you. Good evening and welcome um, to a, what I hope will be a very uh, informative and educational and interesting uh, evening for you. My name is Carolyn Weeks and uh, I'm a member of the League Women Voters and I live in your neighboring city, Independence. Thank you to the sponsors, the, the Great Town Chamber of Commerce, along with the League Women Voters, um, and the city has provided this beautiful building. I just learned that my brother-in-law designed this building. I didn't know it until just recently. <laughs> um, so League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. Um, it does not uh, screen or endorse candidates. We are issue-oriented. We study the issues, and uh, then we come to a consistent consensus, and then we take our position uh, to the legislators at the uh, appropriate government level and uh, try to get our positions um, across. Um, all, what we really need to do is um, have a few just guidelines that we need to go over. All candidates who filed um, were invited to participate tonight. Because the nonpartisan nature of our forum, campaign literature, that's caps, banners, uh, t-shirts um, are not permitted in, in the hall, but you, they will be out on the, on the table in the hall after the, the presentations. Um, you should have been given three by five cards. If you do not have them, please hold up your hand because you'll have questions that you want to write, and that's the form that we will take the questions. Um, so I raise your hand if you uh, also have your card question complete. You can bring them up to the um, question sorters. Um, yes, that you not pause, um, and I'll uh, kind of save that to the last anyway. Um, also, um, please turn off your cell phone. Other league members who are, are residing outside of Raytown but are helping this evening are the timekeeper, Cheryl Orange, right here, the color book. Um, um, Anita um, Steele is the uh, site coordinator, card sorters, Joanne Hill, Dixie Brown, and the uh, card collectors are Rhoda Purtell and Charles Steele. The format for the evening is this. Two mayoral candidates, Mr. Pat Ertz and Mr. Michael McDonough, will be answering your questions. Mayoral candidates have drawn for order of their two-minute closing remarks and their opening remark. Um, following um, the, the answering questions with the mayor, the um, alderman candidates will have the opportunity to introduce themselves and participate in a meet and greet, um, for five minutes each, and answer uh, questions. Um, main question is, what would you like to achieve in a four-year term as an alderman of the city of Raytown? So we will um, start with the mayor's um, question to the mayor, and um, Mr. 
Oh, no. Thank you very much. Mr. Earth will be the first uh, question. Yeah, the first question. background or education qualified that qualifi qualifies you to be the mayor? What will be the first thing you will work to change? Thank you. I'm Pat Hurt, obviously. Uh, why I think I'm qualified what is my background? Well, I... Uh, I've been an alderman for the last eight years for the city of Raytown. I've enjoyed that very much. I believe that gives me experience up here at the city um, of getting together with other aldermen to bring legislative issues forward. I also have 30 plus years of management experience, both in public and private entities. Private entities like Hy-Vee Food Stores, that uh, as a meat market manager, I learned about personnel issues, about uh, deadlines, and about customer service. At my public business, which is Jackson County Public Water District 2, which is where I've served eight years, I've learned about budgets and government regulations and planning for the future. I believe all those things make me qualified for mayor. Mr. My name is Michael McDonough. I believe the qualities of education that I have bring to this job are I just retired from the police department after nearly 40 years, so I've worked under a lot of administrative uh, administrations, I'm sorry, up here. Um, I have learned to do budgets uh, to help put budgets together downstairs in the city, I'm sorry, the police department for being brought up to City Hall for my unit, written grants, uh, gotten equipment from the different entities of the government for equipment to be brought here to Raytown to be used by our police department. Uh, I went to Longview, UMKC, CMSU, uh, and I also went to Avila. I graduated from UCM uh, School of Management, uh, Police Management, I'm sorry, certification back in the 80s. Um, I have a lot of ideas that I'd like to bring people together to try to do to make businesses and neighborhoods nicer here in the city. Next question. This would be um, uh, Mr. McDonough. Let me start. How do you foresee downtown Raytown in the next four years? What I'd like to see in the downtown Raytown is for it to be developed with the streetscape and buildings added to part of the green space so that we can have some nice restaurants and mom and pop, pop type businesses uh, and use the north side of the green space for concerts and get-togethers such as the barbecue contest, uh, summer fest, things of that nature. I'd like to see it be uh, developed to the point it has these small businesses which will bring in uh, jobs and also bring in taxes and help bring amenities of that sort downtown. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to continue to support our downtown businesses. They need us very much. I'd like to open up the green space to all public churches, uh, organizations, to use that green space uh, for any activities they see fit, and, and just to bring foot traffic downtown so that more people can see what we have to offer for the downtown uh, businesses we have. I want to work with the businesses in order to locate them downtown. I want to have, encourage them to use our economic development department here at the city of Raytown to help see what, what they can do to make that process of become, becoming a law and top business. I believe the city can help. And I also want to remind them all that we have a, uh, already existing tax abatements in place which can help with the financing for our downtown redevelopment. And of course, I want to make sure that we have streets and sidewalks, the streetscape project finished, and I want to continue all those things forward into the future. And, and 
we just need to come together as a community. I also would like to see us use some of that green space for green space if we see fit. Thank you. Next question. Mr. Hertz, how will the city work to attract homeowners and businesses to Raytown? I think as a city we need to, uh, first of all, start partnering with our school district to see what kind of help they can need as a city. Our home values are tied to how the school districts go. We need, if I'm elected mayor, I'd like to bring back the liaison position on the city council to the school district. So we can be involved as the school board goes forward in deciding what the future, you know, how to improve our schools in the future. I think that we can also be aware that we've got a new server development going on at the, where the old Bannister Mall was. We need to have our, our streets and our community looking good for when new people come into town. We need to check out how what we can do to work with Cerner as they, I hear they're going to hire 14,000 plus employees. How will we make Great Town work for those employees to live in a close, we're so close to them, I'm sure it will help great people into this town. Next question, <coughs> Mr. McDonald. Will there be a new tax increase? and proposal if you are mayor? I think that's something that somebody would have to study first. But at this point, I don't see where that would be necessary. Right? Because uh, the balanced budget, uh, we'd have to look at what we want to accomplish first before we would approach having any kind of tax increases of any kind. Are Raytown homes single family homes? Okay. You're talking about, I, I also do not see any reason for a tax increase. Over the last eight years as an alderman, we had a balanced budget every year as a city. We've also reduced our debt in the last, over the last few years by over a million dollars. We have over two million dollars in reserve, 17% of our, of our budget. Uh, tax increases are, are only a last resort if, if essential city services cannot be met. But I think with, with my experience, the planning that I can bring to the table, we will not have to, to go down that road of asking anybody for more money. Okay. And to do again. Are Raytown homes single family homes? What is to be done to enforce property court codes for single family homes and rental property? I believe the codes department should be fair and just and active. Uh, codes do need to get out and, and work with the community on a one-on-one -on -one basis more. Whether we need to look at our codes department to find out what is lacking in certain areas, and in many areas they do a fantastic job, but, but there are areas where we all know it seems like there's problem areas. If, if there's anything that we can do as a Board of Aldermen to change our existing ordinances, I, I would go to the Board of Aldermen and ask, what can, what can we do for ideas to end the, 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 the amount of time between we get the junk trash and debris hall to where it's finally cleaned up? It never seems to be quick enough, and I think it needs to be improved. I think we're, we've got enough minds between me and the, and the City Council that we can come forward and make some things that will help our home values by keeping our safe, our streets look beautiful, and look beautiful all the time. I believe that the way we're going to do that is to have fair and productive codes enforcement. I believe also what we need to do is more like a community policing type of thing where we have somebody who cannot, because of their age, clean up the property, that we can hook them up with some kind of charity group or church that can come in and help them instead of continue to write them some kind of citations. I believe that getting the neighborhoods cleaned up and in order would also be encouraged by having uh, some of the programs we used to have many, many years ago, like the paint up, clean up, fix up, where it was touted with banners and such things like that, where you can get people involved and interested in the community and see if they can all come together to help the other people that might need help and also clean up their own property instead of just strictly code violations. Thank you. Mr. Hertz, <clears throat> how do you feel?
feel about the charter? Is the change good for Raytown, in your opinion? I believe there are good charters, and I believe that when this comes to a vote, I will support the will of the people. I do not have an opinion on whether or not the charter, this charter, is the right one. But there, I encourage, I, I fully respect the 13 people who worked so hard on it for the last year. I encourage all the citizens to read the charter carefully, and you're, go vote, you're, you're conscious on the charter. As mayor, with my experience, I will do the best I can to make sure it's implemented and implemented fairly to the wishes of the people. Mr. McDonough? I was one of the charter commissioners, and we worked hard to write a charter that reflected best what we have now with some additions. I encourage everybody to take a good hard look at the booklet and read the questions and answers that the lawyer gave on it and to really inspect it well. I believe that it is a good document and I believe it's something that will help this community move forward. Thank you. Mr. McDonough, what will be your three top goals as mayor? <coughs> My top three goals would be to get the businesses moving forward through initiatives where we can try to draw in businesses of all kinds like restaurants, um, technology type businesses, um, also develop uh, faster some of the downtown area as well as out on the highway and bring in <coughs> businesses that people would be genuinely interested in rather than just the chains. Those are important but we also need the mom and pop businesses very badly in Raytown. The other thing I would do again would be to try and get the people involved in trying to clean up their neighborhoods and helping their neighbors get it cleaned up so that the neighborhoods will look really good, which will be more inviting. And the third thing is, is I would make sure that we do something to try to get the roads paved with asphalt rather than slurry, seal, and rock so that there's more curb appeal to those neighborhoods, which is what the taxes were meant for. Thank you. Uh, my three goals would be uh, property values, public safety and, and economic development. I believe we must work in all respects to get property values stabilized and increasing again through code enforcement, aesthetics of the community, sidewalks, curbs, streets. <clears throat> I believe that when it comes to public safety, we need to continue to, to fully fund our EMS and police departments and bring them forward to the, to the modern era, which we have been doing with uh, laptop computers in the, in the cars, modern uh, radio equipment, and uh, when it comes to economic development, I'm sure everybody can drive down 350 Highway and see all the changes that have happened over the last six or eight years. We've, we've taken three Chrysler, dealer, the Chrysler dealerships and turned them into an IHOP, a uh, Hy-Vee Gas, and, and an Aldi. We, we need to continue that economic development because that's the engine that's going to generate more sales tax dollars that the city needs in order to fund the better roads and the streets. What do you think about the Rock Island ROW for mass transportation and the Katy Trail? Exciting thing to happen to the city of Raytown. 
unlike a, a bus service, which a route can change, once you get light rail, it's there forever. You cannot move those tracks. That means economic development happens along that line. The way it's set up currently, or, or plans that we have seen, all include a stop, at least one stop in Raytown, if not more. What a great vitalization for downtown would be if we could get that stop to be down by a new brewery that we could have downtown, or our businesses downtown. It would bring foot traffic down there and could help us greatly. And of course the KB Trail and the bike with the biking on that also, I think would be wonderful. I believe, and believe that we should make our city a bike friendly city and having the KB Trail come through here would be wonderful also. But we must get with our city leaders and we must talk about how we will fund this item. I'm sure it will come with a cost to every city that, that's along. Mr. <laughs> what are the most pressing issues um, facing Raytown? I think our home values and the increased amount of rental property, which you had mentioned earlier, is, is a very pressing issue on, on our minds. I believe we've all seen our neighborhoods and we feel like maybe they're not what they used to be, but I think they can be and I think they will be. I think that as a pressing issue to get to do more development of our roads, we need to go back to why we do not have the money in the first place. And I believe that comes from our sales tax base. Our sales tax runs the city, but we need to increase the amount of sales taxes that we come in, not as a sales tax per item, but the amount of dollars spent in our community so we have more money to fund going forward. As a city, we had a survey that showed that we're only receiving back about 65 cents for every available dollar from the Raytown citizens. At least some is getting back a dollar thirty-five, a dollar fifty. So when we shop at other communities, that money is going to help their police department and their streets and their roads. If we could bring that back to the city of Raytown and get us up just to the dollar level from 65 cents, it would be over a million dollars more that we could add, and nobody would pay another cent in taxes. Mr. McDonough, same question. I think one of the first, I'm sorry, I think one of the first things you have to do uh, is to bring people into the city, is to take care of the aesthetics and the infrastructure. Uh, one of the things I've heard several times is when people come into our city and they see the gateways and they run down or they're not being taken care of, one of the first things they do is make a decision if that's the first thing they see, whether or not they want to go any further. I think also take care of the roadways, the roadways are in bad shape and get them taken care of. And if that takes uh, grants that are out there to try to take care of the infrastructure and grants to take care of the roadways, then I think we ought to apply for those and I think we ought to use that money to forward those things as quickly as possible and get the aesthetics going. The other thing again is the neighborhoods once again and also trying to draw businesses once that all happens so we have more tax base and more tax money as well as people wanting to come here to spend their money in the mom and pop shops that I would like to see. Thank you. This is another question regarding the charter. Why does charter put more control in hands of aldermen instead of the mayor? Yeah, Mr. McDonough. Yeah. From what I see in the charter, it does not change much at all what it has now in our ordinance and what it would be under the charter. I don't see, when people say that, I don't see that there's any great change whatsoever. Mr. Well, I do see some changes in it. I, I don't know why does it do that. It seems to be a question for the charter writers rather than me. Uh, I believe uh, as, it, as it sits, uh, it is said to be a weak mayor, strong alderman, form of charter. Uh, I believe that's going to be up to the voters to decide if that's how we would like to do the city, have the city run. Thank you. Back to the charter, Mr. Ertz. What specific controls of our city by the state need to be changed because these controls are bad for us? Well, the state of Missouri will always trump the city whether we have a charter or not. So uh, I think we could just look at 
Columbia, Missouri just passed an ordinance duly through their city banning plastic bags in grocery stores. And the state of Missouri went all the way to banning the ban of plastic bags. So cities could not do that. And that's a, that's a charter city right there that kind of showed that, that the, who's boss as far as what, what goes on as far as doing your government. What controls we have, the, the, we've gone down for legislative issues, uh, you know, putting uh, sales taxes on the ballots. You know, we would, right now, we would have to go to the state of Missouri to ask to see if we, it's okay for us to put on the ballot to ask our citizens whether or not we would have a sales tax increase. With a charter form of government, that takes that level out. We can do it as a city. And if we decided that we needed to put something forward to our people, we can do it directly. Mr. McDonough? I think the real simple answer to that is, why should we have to go to Jeff City? If it's not something you can do by state ordinance, then we wouldn't try doing it. However, <coughs> if it's something, as Ms. Hirsch was talking about, a sales tax or something like that, why can't the people of Raytown figure that out for themselves and they'd be able to with a charter rather than having to go to Jeff City at all? Why do we need to go to Jeff City when we can run our own city? That's my simple answer. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, callers that haven't come in? Uh, we'll go to the two-minute uh, closing remarks then for you. And um, Mr. Ertz, uh, will you begin with your two-minute closing remarks? Well, thank you very much, legal women voters. Uh, thank you, Chamber of Commerce, and, and thank you all for being here today. It's great to see so many people that care about our city to show up on a beautiful night for this. Okay, as mayor. I will be accessible, I will keep regular posted hours so citizens without an appointment can communicate with me. We have an abundance of talented citizens with great ideas and I want to better engage those citizens. I will ask and encourage all of them for their ideas to move this town forward. We will openly discuss topics before us in a fair and respectful manner. I will encourage the aldermen to bring new ideas forward because continuing the progress in Raytown is the most important goal. I will continue the economic development with the intention of keeping more of those sales tax dollars in Raytown. I plan to use that new revenue for better infrastructure. We need street bikes, we need sidewalks, we need so much more. I will bring back the liaison position, as I said, to the Board of Alderman for the School District. Again, our property values are tied to the quality of our schools and we need to be better prepared to find ways in which we can help them so we can help us. I would also bring back the Finance Committee so the Alderman can have a better idea about the oversight of the finances of the committee. I will continue to look for tenants for the green space, and I do think we need to seriously consider leaving some of that space green. Why don't we have conversations about a band shell or a public meeting area in our downtown area? I encourage the citizens on April 8th to go to the REAP Conference Center at 6.30, where our Parks Department will be doing a study of, for the future of our park system. It be a great place to, to go if you are interested in community centers. We do a lot of great things in Raytown, and, I, and we have so many talented people working at the city, and so many others that we need to get involved. With that said, I have a lot of work ahead of us to continue the progress in the city of Raytown. I have the experience in the public and private and civic sector to achieve our goals and you continue, to make, it, and you continue would, to make this a great place to work, live, and raise a family, and I ask for your vote for mayor on April 7th. Mr. McDonough. Thank you. Thank you. serving as mayor of Raytown would be a perfect fit for me after I retired. I then developed a creed for serving as mayor. The C would be community service, the willingness to support friends and neighbors to build our community 
through positive collaborations, when <coughs> government has lost transparency and its ability to directly connect with the citizens it serves. We need leadership that is willing and able to build bridges, and under my administration, we would start that in our community on day one. Recruiting new jobs and businesses, jobs and small businesses are the drivers of our community and help us to focus on smart, affordable amenities to our community. Sometimes government gets in the way with business startups and job growth because it can be inefficient. I will work to streamline these practices so they serve legitimate public interest in the most efficient way possible. In this way, we can champion the message that Raytown is a great place to live and a great place to work. Education, like schools throughout the country, our school system is facing challenges in dealing with economic and societal changes. The city's role is to support the school district, not run it. I look forward to working with them to continue the Raytown's quest to build the highest performing schools. Enforcement, the safety of our community is one of our greatest assets. I remain committed to an efficient and effective police force with a community-oriented approach of law enforcement as it has been under Chief Lynch. Development, one of Raytown's greatest assets is its geographic proximity to the Kansas City downtown. I think we need greater focus on entertainment and arts, crafts, uh, creative uh, chefs and restaurants, and high quality dining. I believe in the community and the individual citizens' power to change our situation. I ask you to join me in this service mission. I ask you to vote for me on April 7th. Thank you and good evening and thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, so, <coughs> the mayoral uh, part of our uh, forum.